our adventures of Biggles. Refreshed by hot coffee and food, Pat and Algie sit by the mosquito and tell Biggles and Bertie their adventures. They feel relaxed and safe when a small plane is seen approaching from the north. It is a puss moth, a private machine, and it is flying low, as if the pilot were inspecting the ground. When it is still a couple of miles away, there is a clatter of rifle shots. The plane is being menaced from the ground. It's the black elephant's men. They're shooting from the bamboo, right below the plane. If that cloak doesn't climb, they'll shoot him down. We'll take up the mozzie. Wouldn't be time. Either he'll come through, or he'll have had it within a couple of minutes. He's climbing now. He must have noticed the shooting. He'll be out of it in a minute. No! No, they've hit him! Baked potatoes! He's in a spin! He'll never pull out of that! Come on, into the mosque, all of you. We're going to get those swine. This is about the spot. Pray. Again, Biggles. I intend to. That was cold-blooded murder. I'm going to plaster this bamboo until I've used every round of ammunition. You're forgetting the pilot, Biggles. What's that? The pilot of the moth. He may be still alive. I don't think so. She's a mess, that kite. Even so, Pat's right. I'd like to plaster those devils, but these other chaps come first. We'll put down. Will it be safe, old bean? I mean to say, suppose the black elephant's blinders have a pot of us. <laughs> After that last burst, I shouldn't think they'd stay to pot at anything. We'll risk it. I'm going to land beside that wreck. Careful with him. Move that junk aside, Bertie. Uh, Roger, O.B. Uh, uh. Right, Algie. Put him down. Can I do anything? No one can help him now, Pat. He was killed instantly before the plane crashed. How do you know? Haven't you noticed the bullet wound in his head? But he could have landed that at any time. No. It's at the back of the skull and the bullet went in at an acute angle. It was fired from below and came up through the plane. One of those lucky shots that often bring down a kite. That's probably why he pranged. I should say so. However, the kite's in such a mess, no one will ever know if it was by rifle fire. Pat, you and Bertie can go through the wreckage for documents, maps and that sort of thing. All right, Biggles. There's been no fire, so if he was carrying anything, we should find it. Are we going to search him? Yes, that's why I sent Pat away. Not a pleasant job, but we must identify him. Then we'll hit back to Kampala after a rather a hectic morning's work. picked up the dope on the pilot, Biggles. It ties in with the papers he was carrying in his wallet. Uh, they didn't tell us much. Just as he was Bruce Allen, a university student from Edinburgh. He arrived here this morning, shortly after you blokes took off. He was looking for his father. Why? Is he out here somewhere? He was, about six months ago. The father was Dr. Allen, a well-known botanist. Dr. Allen? There was something about him in the papers a few months ago. Yes, he led an expedition up Mount Ruwenzori searching for some rare plants which he believed he might find there. You're talking as if the old chap's dead, old bean. He almost certainly is. After he'd passed the permanent snow line on the mountain, his native bearers deserted him, and he carried on by himself. 
He hasn't been heard of since. Who brought back the report about the natives? They did themselves. They said they couldn't stand the cold up there. The police here at Kampala questioned them and sent up a search party. But they didn't find any trace of the old man. They've officially given him up for dead. Why? If they didn't find the body? The sergeant said no man by himself could survive the conditions high up on the mountain. Nor could he survive an attack by treacherous natives. But go on, Algy. I take it young Bruce Allen didn't accept the verdict? No. He hired that little moth and came out to make an aerial search. The airport officials told him you were in the vicinity of the mountains, so he may have been looking for you when he was killed. Murdered? Killed is too soft a word for that butchery. Yes, the Allen family didn't have much luck with Africa. It proved tragic for both of them. Pickles, old bean, don't you think the old doctor bloke was lost in the snow country? There's no question that he was lost up there, but I think it may have been at the hands of his native bearers. Why should they kill him? For the same reason the black elephant kills, for loot. Dr. Allen would have been carrying a good deal of valuable equipment. Shrewd natives would realize that. And if they were unscrupulous, they wouldn't he- hesitate to kill for it. Oh, but hang it all, they wouldn't dare snuffle a white man, would they? Not ordinary native bearers. Since Seta Zulu started his raiding up and down the country, apparently quite a few of the natives have been indulging in petty outlawry when they feel they can get away with it. And those boys way up on Mount Ruanzori would have had every opportunity to get away with it. So, in a way, both murders can be put down to the black elephant. Quite possibly. We saw him commit one of them, so at least we can get him for that. The question is, old sausage, how? All we know is that he disappeared into the belly bamboo. And that belly strip trundles south for about 300 miles and north for about another 100. The black elephant and his boys might be anywhere in the jolly old nonsense. I know more than that. About the only good thing to come out of Bruce Allen's death was that it proved that the gang was heading north. That's right. The shooting came from well to the north of the point where they disappeared. That's the direction they're heading. And they'll keep heading that way until we stop them. I'm a bit with Bertie. How are we going to do it? I'm... I'm not sure yet, and I'm not going to try and work it out tonight. We'll wait until Ginger Ginger comes in tomorrow. He may have news that will change our ideas. I say, you don't suppose anything's happened to the old trout? Surely it wouldn't take him until tomorrow to have word with Nishu, what? Well, his signal said he'd be back tomorrow. Now, we're all done in after today's effort, so I suggest we have some sleep. And don't let worries about Ginger keep you awake. He can look after himself as well as any of you. Buana, you there, Buana? Michu, uh, just a sec, I'll light the lamp. No, no light, and Buana not too loud. Why not? This is the rest hut. There's no need for secrecy here. We don't keep quiet, Buana. Native from Kral hear us come to see. Oh, I'll soon send them off if they do. You aren't frightened of the local natives, are you, Michu? Michu Masai warrior. No native frighten Michu. But it better they not see him here. Uh, perhaps you'd better tell me what's going on. Native in Latonga Kral, not good native. Michu know this. They know Michu one time work for government. They not like him. Oh, but they, they wouldn't harm you. They know you're working for us. They try to stop me see you. Michu no. He lie in grass and hear native talk of this. Why are they trying to stop you from seeing me? Because I tell you of dead man. What dead man is this? Dead white man. Men of Bungoro tribe find body. They bury him so hyenas not eat him. This they tell Michu. Michu come back La Tonga tell Buana. And the Latonga boys didn't want you to tell me. I wonder why. Michu not know, but he hear them say they kill Michu when they find him. Well, don't worry, I shan't let them do that. Michu not let them do that. But he see Buana first. Yes, that was wise of you, Michu. Uh, do you know anything more about this white man? Who he was, or, or where the body was found? Not know who he was, but Michu take you to the body. Oh, good man. Is it far from here? To the north, near Sudan. Maybe one day. A day's march? Hmm. Still, it won't take us long by plane. 
Uh, can you guide me to it by air? Uh, that and duck. We'll leave it till just before dawn. Then it'll be daylight by the time we hit up towards the Sudan border. That suit you? Yes, Bwana. Me shall go back to forest. Wait that till dawn. Not on your life. You'll stay here in the rest hut with me. It's more comfortable. But men from Kral... Uh, they don't know you're here. And they wouldn't dare to touch you. Uh, you turn in on that bunk by the door. Uh, we'll be right here until morning. Juana. You sleep, Juana. Huh? Huh? Not talk loud. They hear. Huh? What's going on? Who'll hear? Men from Kral. They come while we sleep. Soon they come into hut to kill. The actions of the Latonga natives are both mysterious and sinister. Why should they plan to harm Ginger and Mishu? And who is the white man who has been found dead near the Sudan border? There'll be thrills and drama in the next gripping episode of... The Air Adventures of Biggles!